It's time to tackle the next item on our programming to-do list. Read the value of the slider after the user presses the Hit Me button. Before we start working on this, I want to tell you about a very important data type you'll use in your iOS apps, strings. To create a string in Swift, you simply surround some text by some quotes. Behind the scenes, strings are just a sequence of characters. You can imagine them as a bunch of characters hanging from a piece of string, like you see here. Strings in Swift have a cool feature called string interpolation. That's just a fancy way of saying that you can put placeholder values inside your string that are replaced dynamically by code when your app runs. Imagine you have a string where you want to put a dynamic value inside at runtime. For example, maybe you want to say hello, and then the name of the user of the app. To do this, whenever you want the value to appear in your string, you just put a backslash and two parentheses. Inside the parentheses, you put some code that evaluates to the value you want to display. In this example, if the name is set to Ray, at runtime, the string will become hello Ray. Let's try this out by making the app print out the value of the slider inside a string. Okay, so remember, here's the code where when you tap the hit me button, it presents a pop-up that says hello there, and the message is, this is my first pop-up. And we want to change the message to give the slider's value instead, so we can kind of test that. It's actually updating that slider value variable behind the scenes. So instead of this is my first pop-up, we're gonna say the slider's value is xxx. That's where we want it to be printed out, right? Except the way, remember, that you do a placeholder in Swift strings is you put slash and two parentheses. And inside these parentheses, you put any code which you want to display inside the string. So we want to display self.slider value. So what this does is self.slider value is a decimal point value. It's basically gonna convert that into a string. So say it's 50.2 and put 50.2 inside the string at this particular point. All right, let's go ahead and build and run. And let's pick a random value here and say, hit me. And it says, hello there, the slider's value is 87.157858. So this is really good news because it's proving that we've correctly bound the slider to a particular code variable inside our class. Now, we are printing the value of the slider, but Currently, it's displaying this value with a rather annoying level of precision. It would be a lot nicer to print this out as a whole number, like 87, rather than having decimal points. Well, how do you fix this? Well, that is something you'll find out how to do in the next episode.